to start the kind of preview of what we'll be talking about this evening. Um, the title is just Passover. Passover. Now, we want to do what is called heart check up before Passover. Heart check up before Passover. We know that Passover began through experience. Yeah, we wanted to use Passover to, you know, give us experience of what he intend to do in the time to come. So that started in Egypt. The experience of Passover has to be in two phases. The first phase was in Egypt. The second phase is in these later days. And we need to understand why in the first place we have to do Passover followed by seven days on leavened bread. We need to know thoroughly at our fingertip why it's important for us to understand what it is all about. We will do that by looking at the scripture The scripture will tell us so many things concerning what we are about to talk about this morning. I'm going to read for us two scriptures. Then I do highlight of check up lists we have to do before we undertake Passover because Passover is not any commerce meeting or gathering yes those who are israelites they gather but particularly in this letter days yahshua is specific of those who are qualified in the olden days in the time of israel in egypt all israelites participated all israel but they, they participated based on following Yahweh's instruction. They followed it to the letter and they were all, all able to make it because they followed the instruction to the letter. But unfortunately, in this letter days, the instruction had been given long time ago, but not many people will follow it, even as they will hear it. They will read it, they will be taught about it, but they will not care. Some will not care, some will want to care, but the care of, the, of this life will not allow them. So, who is to be blamed? Yahweh or themselves? At the end of the day, they have to tell us who is to be blamed. Right. Let's look at the prelude, what is called the prelude to rescuing Israel. If you like, Passover, another word for Passover is salvation, deliverance from captivity. Unfortunately, Yahweh told Israel, the Egypt you are coming out from, the enemies you are seeing today attacking you, you will not see them again. You will not go Egypt again. But that was not to be. Because 
the letter began not to hear Yahweh again. They didn't care. They didn't bother. They decided not to listen to Yahweh again. So the Egyptians, he said to them, you will not encounter in their life. They had to go through that again. And that is what is called this Gentile world where they are. Not just in exile, but in captivity. They are held into slavery, into imprisonment, into persecution, into affliction, into problems that Israel wouldn't have encountered. Just unfortunate. So Passover was created time ago by Yahweh. Because Yahweh will always have solution to every problem in advance. And he will tell his children, he will teach them how he will use the solution to bail them out, to deliver them, to secure them. Let's read Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. I want to read it relatively in the translation that we are used to. That is common English. The King James is left out. Let's use New Living Translation to pay attention and listen to what Yahweh is saying. Why the Israelites we are still in the land of Egypt, Yahweh gave the following instructions. Did you hear that? Instructions or commandments or rules or regulations. Yahweh gave these rules for them to comply. To Moses, he gave it, and Aaron, those are the two men of all the Israelites. From now on, says Yahweh, this month will be the first month of the year for you. So this is our first month. Our first week, our first month, our first year. The beginning of Yahweh's people, I mean Yahweh's people, their new year begins in this particular month of Abi. It's called Abi. When they were in, when Judah were in um, Babylon, it was called, they call it Nisan, month of Nisan. But in Hebrew, it is called Abi, month of their deliverance. The month they were to eat a certain meal in hurry in order for them to escape from the clutches of their enemies. Announce to the whole community of Israel, whole house of Israel, that on the tenth day of this month, each family must choose a lamb of a young goat for a sacrifice, one animal for each household. Now let me address this. When you look at Exodus chapter 12, if you understand Exodus chapter 12, you will understand how to calculate Yahweh's feasts. That is the beginning of, you know, working out when the feast will be held every year. Now, there is a statement Yahweh made. And he, he gave the instruction is clear. But unfortunately, because we are not privy to the feast of Yahweh. So most times we struggle. We have been struggling all along since we he called us. We don't, you know, we are never into this area before. So we didn't know much. But on a daily basis, he keep on telling us and uh, giving us understanding to what we should be doing. Um, he said to Moses and Aaron, on the tenth day 
of this month, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice. Right. This is how he asked them to yearly calculate Passover. The beginning of the month is when they see the new moon, which we saw or celebrated on the 14th of this month. So, from the day, even if it is first, first day of the month, of the Gentile month, or second or third, irrespective of the date, if you see the, I mean, if you celebrate the new moon, even on the 30th, that is the beginning of the month itself, the beginning of the month. So, that is where you base your calculation of Passover. So what you do is we celebrated our new moon on the 14th. So he said from that particular date take a lamb no, 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 sorry. After counting 10 days from the time you celebrated the new moon take a lamb and keep it. Keep it for how many days? 10 days. Now, from that 10 months, I mean, the, the, the 14th day of the month, we have to keep the lamp for 10 days. Then on the 14th day, after celebrating the new moon, kill the lamp of Passover. Kill it in the evening. Now, the evening, you call, you call it two evenings intertwining evenings so you must be very careful because Yahweh's new day begins or new morning begins in the evening at dawn and there is this evening of the very day that is passing on it's just passing away sorry the, the day that day is just passing and you see that the evening are intertwined so, where, which one is the evening to which Yahshua, Yahweh is referring to that the animal will be killed? So, what happened in Matthew chapter 26 when he told the disciples to go and prepare the meal? You know, helped us to understand clearly what Yahweh is talking about on when it will be killed. At twilight, the New Living Translation will say twilight. They will kill the goat or the sheep at twilight. Now, it's not to be killed or they are not going to be to kill the animal when it is dark. Because when the sun sets, immediately the sun sets, darkness will envelop everywhere. So that is not the time they have to kill the the. the the goat or the sheep. And if you look at Yahshua, just follow what happened in the case of Yahshua. Yahshua was the lamb. When was he killed? About noon. Between noon going towards between, between 1 and 3 o'clock. And the law of the Jews says before the sun set, he must be buried. And that's why Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus hurried up to make sure that before the sun set, they get everything and good at thing, the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea was available. Otherwise, they would have run into trouble. Before the sun set, Yahweh is, he is meticulous when he gives us instruction. So, the evening before the evening of the Passover, every preparation would have been done, as we see in the case of Matthew 26. 
when the disciples went and prepared everything, there was still some hours left before the evening. So they had to go back and tell the master that everything is set. So they waited. When the sun was set, the master led the way, taking them to the house where they will eat the supper. I mean, where they will eat the, the meal, the Passover meal. So that was the evening of the Passover. They went. But the evening when the, 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 the items were prepared was the other day. A day that is passing away. So that day that is passing away is not the very day that is calculated as the Passover day. But the Passover day is at the time the, the sun set or is done. So what I want us to understand is from the time we celebrate new moon in the very month of Passover, that very day we add straight on 14 days. Evening of that 14 days at sunset, the animal will be killed. So that is what Yahweh wants us to understand. The Holy Spirit gave me this understanding when I was reviewing it during the week. Now, let's go on. There is another thing he mentioned that I need to explain here. Let's look at verse 4 there. For a family is too small, if the family is too small, to eat a whole animal, let them share with another family in the neighborhood. Divide the animal according to the size of each family and how much they can eat. You find out that this instruction gives us understanding that getting the animal, buying the animal, bringing the animal, because there are some families that cannot afford to kill a whole goat or a whole sheep. So, such less privileged families, they can be two or three, then they can kill it and share it. So this is done during the day. So it's the, the other side of the day that it is done. Before the evening, before the sunset, that will have been concluded. So each family will take their own portion, go into their house and prepare it, cook it, prepare, get all the, you know, unleavened bread, the, 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 the herb, the bitter herb to eat it and um, other things that follow it, which we are going to see here. Now, verse, verse 5. The animal you select must be a one-year-old male. Why one-year-old? Either a sheep or a goat with no defects. At one year, it's tender. At one year, it is clean. Supposed to be pure, provided it has no disease. So, it's a suitable animal for presentation because it's the sacrifice is unto Yahweh. It's not unto themselves. So it must be clean, and it's it's representing what is to come in future. Two thousand years ago, Yahshua was that lamb. So that is why everything has to be strictly according to Yahweh's plan. So that nothing will falter. Verse 6, very important. Take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of this first month. Have you heard that? When you pick the animal... On the fourteenth day, it is what? It is the month. I mean, the, the very day you are going to kill it for the feasts, for you to commemorate the feast of 
Passover. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter their lamb or young goat at twilight. Now, this twilight, when I checked it in some translations, it said it is minus or plus day. Minus plus. That is in between two days. It can be, it can be before the very day, before the sunset, or as the sunset is done, as, as they are entering the sunset, everything must have been done. The, the, that means the preparation, the cleaning of the animal must have been, everything must have been done. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides of the top of, of door, door frames of the houses where they eat the animal. The animal must be killed, prepared, and they will eat it in the house that they live, not outside. Why? Because it will be night. When they will be eating it, it will be night. That means the, the, the Passover meal will be happening in the night. By that time, for instance, if it's in Africa, by 6 o'clock, the sun is gone down. At least 6, 7 o'clock is dark. So darkness has started. If they begin to eat at that time, that is it. And another important thing is that they must not go out from that time. The door must be locked. The blood of the animal will be, you know, will be marked on the two sides of the door and at the lintel of the door for a purpose which I'm going to read here that that same night they must roast the meat over a fire and eat it along with bitter salad grains and bread made without yeast they will eat it with bitter green or bitter leaf with salad, that is, it, it is going to be like a salad sort of the way they are going to prepare it. But it must be roasted. It must be roasted. The eating there with unleavened bread and bitter herb, the eating there is the animal. That is what the eating is all about. Do not eat any of the meat raw or boiled in water. The whole animal, including the head, legs, and the internal organs, must be roasted over a fire. Do not leave any of it until the next morning. Burn whatever is not eaten before morning. These are four instructions. These are four, sorry, these are for your instructions for eating this meal. Be fully dressed, wear your sandals, and carry your walking stick in your hands. Eat the, uh, eat the meal with urgency, for this is Yahweh's supper. It is Yahweh's supper. That is why care must be taken in everything that uh, one must do before the meal is eaten. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn, every firstborn son and, and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgments against all the gods of Egypt, for I am Yahweh. Yahweh said that he is not only going to kill the firstborn of Egyptians, but their gods will be destroyed. All their gods. Before Yahweh will attack any a community or whatever before Yahweh we deal with any sickness because all these demons and forces of darkness hide under the cloak of gods or idols and all that Yahweh will first of all destroy such idol whatever it is that call itself idol Yahweh will sweep them away but the blood on your doorpost will serve as a sign Marking the houses where you are staying. Sign. Blood is a sign. 
mark it at your door at the lintel so that it will be a sign given to the angel of slaughter when they get there and see the blood the sign then they will know that Yahweh's own people are there Yahweh's people are there they will pass over pass over the house pass over Israel and go into another house that means Yahweh is passing the angel that is to destroy such house or such people will when they see the blood they will pass over to another and another and another any wherever they don't see the salt the blood that means that house or the firstborn will die or the first animals will die everything that is firstborn in that house will go when i see the blood i will pass over you this plague of death will not touch you when i strike the land of egypt this is why passover is salvation the passover we are celebrating the feast of passover is celebration of salvation of deliverance of yahweh saving his people and this is why yahweh says that in this letter we in fact yahshua said we should continue it until he returns why are you going to carry it on? That which started in Egypt, Israelites never stopped it. The Jews never stopped it. Till Yahshua came, it continued. And Yahshua said, continue because the job is not finished yet. Israelites are scattered all over the world. They are not delivered yet. So that is why we have to continue doing it until he returns. To do what? To save them. Where is the proof? Matthew chapter 121 Joseph and Mary were told that this, the name of their son will be called Yahshua, for he will deliver his people from their sin. So, Yahshua means Savior, salvation, giver of salvation, redeemer. That is what that name depicts, Yahshua. And that is why they have to carry on doing it until he returns, he comes back. And Luke chapter 1, I think, verse 31 also repeated the sentence. This is a day to remember. Mm -hmm. A day you have to continue to remember. Because Yahweh did that as a mark, as a symbol, for you to continue to remember. Something, it's not something you forget. What do you see today? No, they say they practice it. But they change it to what the pagan pagan feast Easter and what they use in pagan Easter commemoration of this feast is different from what Yahweh recommends. Yeah, they say they use uh, a living bread, they use uh, wine and all that, but there are some other things. What of the egg? What of the other uh, 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 bones? That is applied and all the things that they put together. What of the, the ceremony or, or the fanfare of the pagan that comes into it? Even the name. Even the, 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 the practice itself. For not following Passover is even a crime. Because the date. They do, do Easter is different from the date Yahweh recommend. Where is the new moon? From which, in fact, the standpoint through which you or the platform which you calculate Passover. So I don't know when they are celebrating their Easter. I don't know whether they've done it or they are, they are yet to do it. But it's a different date. So if you do it a different date, you have you have destroyed. In fact, somebody is destroying himself because the angel that will be passing will be passing at a particular night. And Yahweh was meticulous. You people should stay in that room, eat that food, even standing up, making sure that the door is locked. Nobody will go out because the angel of slaughter, anybody met outside will be destroyed. Whether you are e Egyptian or because the blood is not on the face of the people. It's not marked on the face of the people. It's marked at the little door. So what Yahweh knows is the door that has that, you know, blood. So if it is Passover, I mean Easter, 
and somebody is celebrating it at a particular a wrong date, a wrong time. Because when the angels will be coming with Yahshua to deal with the wicked people, to deliver his people, it must be at a particular time. Must be at a particular time. So if they miss that time or the season, <laughs> that will be it. Somebody will go. Because it's all about salvation. People say they want to be saved. In fact, they, the Christianity are saying they are already saved. Once saved, forever saved. They are saved. They are not saved anything. This Passover celebration, this Passover feast is talking about how we will be saved. How we will be saved. Verse 14. This is a day to remember each year. From generation to generation, you must celebrate it as a special festival to, to Yahweh. This is a law for all time. It is a law from generation to generation. You must celebrate it. It is a law for all time. Not only in Egypt, not only in the land of Canaan. At all time, until Yahshua will come on board. Because Yahshua is going to celebrate it even more in, <laughs> in a way that you never even see it before. Because he said he is going to re-establish this something. I mean, he is going to celebrate it with, with the disciples. That disciples mean all others as well at this particular time. For seven days, the bread you eat, you, you, you eat must be made without feast. On the first day of the festival, remove every trace of yeast from your homes. Anyone who eats bread made with yeast during the seven days of the festival will be cut off from the community of Israel. Mm -hmm. That is Yahweh's voice. That is Yahweh's word. Violate it. Then you wait for the result. Say no to it. You wait for the result. On the first day of festival, and again on the seventh day, all the people must observe an official day for holy assembly. There is high Sabbath on the beginning of the first day of the unleavened bread. Here, in verse 16, Yahweh is beginning to talk about the unleavened bread. He has talked about the Passover. He's talking about the unleavened bread. The two go together, but they are not the same. Though you can call the two Passover. When you say Passover, that means unleavened bread is following. We must endeavor not to disobey. He said, no walk of any kind may be done on these days except in the preparation of food. So on the day of unleavened bread, that first day is Sabbath. It's called High Sabbath. That day you don't do any work. You don't do any work. But you can prepare your food on that day. That is only what is exempted. And that food you must have purchased it. It's not that it's not sending you to go and buy your food that day. No. Everything you will you, you eat will be in your house. That is only applicable on the very day that you are beginning the feast of unleavened bread. And that means immediately after Passover, after 24 hours after Passover, you begin the unleavened bread. Celebrate this festival of unleavened bread for it will remind you that I brought you forces I brought your forces out of the land of Egypt on this very day this festival will be a permanent law for you celebrate this day from generation to generation so the reason you celebrate the unleavened bread part of it and the major part of it is to remind us continuously, remind us that Yahweh 
and only Yahweh brought us out from Egypt. And in these latter days, he and him alone will bring us out from the captivity of Gentiles, from north, from south, from east, from west. So you continue to do it because the, the job is not finished. Israelites cost it. Children of Yahweh cost it. They rebelled. They have to go into captivity again. So you have to do the work again. The bread you eat must be must be made without yeast from the evening of the 14th day. That is the day that this will begin. Day of the first month until the evening of the 20th day. So our 14th we celebrated our new moon on the 14th. 14th, you add another 14, that is 28. So the unleavened bread will start on the evening of that 28, which is right. So what Yahweh is asking us to do. Verse 19. Sorry. I have not finished that eating. The bread you eat must be made without yeast from the evening of the 14th day of the of the first month until the evening of the 21st day of that month. During those seven days, so seven days for the unleavened bread is not explained. During those seven days, there must be no trace of yeast in your homes. Anyone who eats anything made with yeast during this week will be cut off from the community of Israel. We should not take this lightly. Yahweh is, you see, he's, he, he elevates his word more than his name. And you know how powerful his name is. But his word is elevated more than his name. So we should not take this lightly. Do it as he specified it. That is, that's, it's not a big deal. It's not work even to follow that in, this instruction. These regulations apply both to the foreigners living among you and to the native both in Israel or born in Israel. During those days, you must not eat anything made with yeast. Wherever you live, eat only bread made without yeast. For Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, Go, pick out a lamb or young goat for each of your families and slaughter the Passover animal. Drain the blood into a basin. Then take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into a blood. The, dip it into, sorry, let me get that again. Drain the blood into a basin. Then take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into the blood. Brush the hyssop across the top and sides of the door, door frames of your houses and no one may go out through the door until morning. As soon as that blood is put at the lintel of the door, the lintel is the upper side of the door, upper, where you put, you can write sign, you can write mark, you can put mark of anything, you know. Then the door itself you mark the both sides so that when the angel is coming, they will see the blood. The strong one in there is do not step out of the house. As soon as that is marked, close the door. You stay there until morning. They should not go out. Even if you are pressed. Even if you are pressed. That is what it means. Make provision. If you are pressed. If you want to go to toilet, if you want to urinate, if you want to do anything, make provision inside that house. Because the angel will not spare anybody who is walking outside. It's for their own safety. And the Bible, you know, never tell us that any of you Israelites were killed. None of them were killed. They were all, you know, saved because they obeyed. They obeyed the instruction. It is one glorious moment or time Israelites put their ears to the word of Yahweh and all of them obeyed and they were saved. Verse 23 
For Yahweh will pass through the land to strike down the Egyptians, but when he sees the blood on the top and the sides of the door frame or doorpost, Yahweh will pass over your home. He will not permit his death, his death angel to enter into your house and strike you down. Remember, these instructions are a permanent law that you and your descendants must observe forever. Have you heard that? Christians, have you heard that? Permanent law. It's the instruction of Yahweh. It's no man's law. You can't change it. You can't twist it. Many are saying today, you can't obey this. You can't follow it. That's why they choose be pagan. Whatever they like, they choose, they do. You know, it doesn't matter. Good at him when Yahshua came. Slaughtering of animal was taken away because he became the Pascal lamb. The lamb that is to be killed became I mean, Yahshua assumed that position. And he saved us. Even because by now we will be looking for a lamb, we will be killing goats and all that. We will be going to the, the, the gentile uh, uh, people to ask for permission to slaughter. Because before you get live animal you want to slaughter, you get license, you get permission to do that. In fact, they can't give you. So how will you have celebrated? Because you will do it the way Yahweh prescribed it. So Yahshua came to save us from all that problem. That today we are not slaughtering animal again. Yahshua had done it once and for all time. And all we need to do is to follow Yahshua's own prescription based on this Passover that was held in Egypt. Because Yahshua didn't go outside it. It was based on the same Passover. But the only thing is that he became the sacrificial lamb. Remember these instructions and as a permanent instruction, permanent law that you and your descendants must observe forever. When you enter the land Yahweh has promised to give you, you will continue to observe this ceremony. Did you hear that? When you enter the land of Canaan, he was telling them, continue. And when Yahshua met them there, the land of Israel, when he came, he met the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Israel, the ten tribe or nine tribe had already been dispersed all over the world. 722 BC before he came, the ten tribe had already been dispersed. So he met the two tribes. And he was I mean, from there, he called the 12 disciples, he called apostles and all that, and educated them and taught his people, taught even some of the Gentile people that he met along, the, like those in the Samaria. The land of Samaria was the land of Ephraim, the land of Israel, the ten, the, the ten tribes. But at that time, it has become the Gentile area. So the woman at the well, we read in John chapter 4, was a Gentile woman. Unfortunately, the ten tribes had lost their place and their identity. So, Yahshua taught them and showed them what they will continue to do until he returns. Matthew 20, 26, verse 29. He said, continue to celebrate. I will not eat this meal again with you until that time when I will be back into the kingdom here, into the government that he will set up. Then he will eat it anew with them. So that is instruction. Should not stop. Then your children will ask, What does this ceremony mean? And you will reply, It is the Passover sac sac sacrifice to Yahweh. For he passed over the house of the Israelites in Egypt, and though he struck the Egyptians, he spared our fathers, our families. When Moses had finished speaking all, all this, the people bowed down to the ground and worshipped Yahweh. So the people of Israel did just as Yahweh had commanded through Moses and Aaron. And that night, at midnight, Yahweh struck down all the firstborn sons in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn son of Pharaoh, Pharaoh uh, who sat at his throne, to the firstborn 
son of the prisoner in the dungeon, even the firstborn of their livestock were killed. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the people of Egypt woke up during the night and loud wailing, loud weeping, loud noise was here throughout the land of Egypt. There was not a single house where someone had not died. The whole house of Egypt were bereaved of their firstborn, firstborn animals, and so on. So Israel as we are rescued, verse 33, or 31, sorry. Pharaoh sent for Moses, even before it was done. Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron during the night. Get out, he ordered. Leave us, leave my people, and take the rest of Israelites with, with you. Go and worship your, uh, your Yahweh as you have requested. Take your flocks and hearts, and as you said, and be gone. Go, but bless me also. Bless me before you go. All the Egyptians urged the people of Israel to get out of the land as quickly as possible, for they thought, we will all die. So this is why Yahweh, Yahweh saw this happening. In Nadva, even Israel didn't, I mean, Yahweh knows end of everything before it even starts. Yahweh knew that they will hasten them up. They will, put, they will say, go, 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 go. So that's why Yahweh said, get ready, put on your cloaks. Put on your, your, even your stuff, hold it in your hands, be eating the meal. So as soon as it is done, in fact, before it is, it, it will be done in the morning, you see what will happen everywhere. And that was what they saw. Dead people everywhere. And the people were urging them, leave us. They were begging them. They kneel on their ground, begging them, leave us. Otherwise, your presence next hour, next moment, if by one one day again you are here, the whole adults will go. They were, they were crying. The Israelites took their bread, dough, before yeast was added. They wrapped their kneading boards in their cloaks and carried them on their shoulders. And the people of Israel did as Moses had instructed. They asked the Egyptians for clothing and articles of silver and gold. They Yahweh caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the Israelites and they gave the Israelites whatever they asked for. So they stripped the Israelites, I mean, they stripped the Egyptians of their wealth. That night, the people of Israel left Ramses and started for Sukkot. They were about 600,000 men, plus all the women and children. A rabble of non-Israelites went with them. A rabble of non-Israelites went with them. Some that were not Israelites, Egyptians went with them. Hmm. No wonder they had problem in the wilderness. Mm. They had problem. And that's why Yahweh is saying, get educated now. Learn now. Otherwise, what happened to the people of the old will happen to <laughs> this uh, 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 age. This age may experience the same trouble because the calf they made must have been suggested by those Egyptians. Because mm. that is what they know. That is how they, I mean, they must have triggered it. And before you know it, they made that calf. And all the rebellion they were having, Egyptians must have been instrumental to it. Yahweh says, learn now. Understand what you need to be doing from now before it is too late. When you hear this good news, do not harden your heart. Don't wait till tomorrow. Get ready. Take off. Begin to learn. Begin to understand. So the rabbis follow them and cause trouble for them. So they went with them with all their hearts, all their flocks. They were going to the land of Israel. To dwell with them. And Yahweh will make sure that they never enter that land. Because they continue to cause Israel to sin. And Israel also amplified it by what they even learned from them. So the <laughs> sinning against Yahweh was very easy and simple for them. For bread, they baked flat, flat cakes from the dough 
without yeast they had brought from Egypt. It was met without yeast because the people were driven out of Egypt in such a hurry that they had no time to prepare the bread or other food. And that marked the setting. They had to eat bread during the unleavened bread. During the period of unleavened bread, they had to eat it. I mean, they have to, all their food has to be unleavened. Because Yahweh yeah, chooses it to be that pattern. That has its significance. That has its meaning. The people of Israel had lived in Egypt for 430 years. In fact, it was on the last day of the 430th year that all the, all the forces, all the people of Yahweh left the land. On the night, Yahweh kept his promise to bring his people out of the land of Egypt. So this night, so this night belongs to him and it must be commemorated every year by all the Israelites from generation to generation. Then we continue to, you know, repeat this. Let us look at verse 48 there. If there are foreigners living among you who want to celebrate the, who want to celebrate Yahweh's Passover, let all their males be circumcised. Only then may they celebrate the Passover with you like any native born Israelite. But no uncircumcised male may ever eat the Passover. Did you hear that? No uncirc Do not eat Passover if you are not circumcised. That is Old Testament. You will say, is it still in vogue? Yes, it is still in vogue. Then, in its advanced level, when Yahshua came, because he became the Passover lamb, he renewed what we are talking about, renewal. And that's why you have New Testament or New Covenant. He became the covenant, the Passover of the New Covenant. What happened? Let us look at what even Apostle Paul wrote via the spirit of Yahshua. Galatians chapter 3, 26 to 27. Galatians chapter 3. Let's go there. This same instruction, Apostle Paul told the, the Galatians and other you know, Gentile believers who came to receive Yahshua concerning how they will also participate in the Passover. They must be circumcised. Though. This is no question of um, grace, grace. You must be circumcised. Okay. Above that, you must do something. Because this is a new covenant. It is now renewed. And if it is renewed, what format is he going to take? What shape is he going to take? And he explained, For you are all children of Yahweh, through faith in Yahshua Messiah. And all who have been united with Messiah in baptism have put on Messiah, like putting on new clothes. All children of Abraham who have been circumcised, Isaac, Jacob, going down the lane, all of them are by faith of Yahshua Messiah, they have Messiah. But they have to do something. They have to do something. And all who have been united with Messiah, in you must now baptize into Yahshua. Because our heart has been the problem causing us not to obey Yahweh's law. So that heart, Yahweh has to deal with it. And that was the promise. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31, he said, I will make a new covenant. Yahshua is the one, the head of the covenant, where the new covenant and the Passover is established. That seed is the seed through and in whom the Passover and the covenant was established. So you must be baptized in, in, in his name. Because everything now is resting in his prayers. There is no longer Jew or Gentile. If you do that, 
So whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, you baptize in the name of Yeshua, you are qualified to be an Israelite. No longer I'm a Jew, no longer I'm Gentile, no longer I'm this, no longer I'm that. So the, the only way to answer an Israelite is simple. Receive the baptism in the name of Yeshua, renouncing all your sins, jettison them, then Yeshua gives a gift to belong to the food of Israel. So, from there, you are no longer a slave. You are no longer, you know. So, anybody, whether you are a slave or you are a free person, in as much as you have renounced sin and received Yeshua, baptized in his name, you are qualified to be an Israel, Israelite. So, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or, or free, male or female, for you are all one in Messiah Yeshua. Very, very important. So that is why we insist that we follow what the scripture prescribed to us. We must follow it. We should not do our own thing, our own way. It is dangerous. It is very, very dangerous to do it our own way. Now, before I ask us some few questions, you have to pass this quiz before we do our Passover letter this evening. So we have discussed two levels of, you know, this Passover. How it was done in the past, how it was done, or we, we, sh we shall be doing it in this particular time. Leviticus 23, 6 to 8. Let's quickly look at it. Leviticus 23, 6 to 8. For, for us to have firm grab of the old old testament prescription of how we must do it and i will let you know some few things that is important you must grab because now if you look at unleavened bread itself unleavened bread is like divided into two you have unleavened bread in leviticus chapter 3 from verses 6 to 8. From verses 6 to 8. We have the living bread. 6 to 8. Let me read it from verse 5. Yahweh's Passover begins at sundown. On the 14th day of the first month. On the next day. All right, I think we somehow we jumped. Okay. From verse 5 there, Yahweh's Passover begins at sundown on the 14th day of the first month. On the next day, the 15th day of the month, you must begin celebrating the festival of unleavened bread. This festival to this festival to Yahweh continues for seven days. That is talking about unleavened bread. And during that time, the bread you eat must be made without yeast, which we heard in Exodus. On the first day of the festival, all the people must stop their ordinary work and observe an official day for holy assembly so work stops we must observe the first day as if it is sabbath for seven days you must present special gifts to yahweh for seven days you must present special gifts to yahweh are we hearing that? Seven days. That's what the Bible recommends. Has it been expunged? Has it been removed? I never hear or see it removed anywhere in the Bible. So what established established there is still what obtains. On the seventh day, the people must again stop all their ordinary work to observe an official day for holy assembly. The beginning of it, of the seventh day, the first day of it, is official day of 
you know, rest. That is Sabbath. And the last day is also a day of rest. No work should be done on them except preparing food, as we read in Exodus. And that also stands. Now, this is the Passover and the living bread together that Leviticus 23 is telling us. Now, verses 9 to 14 tell us something about first harvest or first fruit. Is it different from unleavened bread? It's slightly different, but it's the same of unleavened bread. Slightly different. This is the portion that mark what Yahshua did for us. Remember in John chapter 20, I think verse, is this verse 17? Gina, can you take Bible or mommy read it for me? As soon as he he he, he got um he, he was resurrected by the father from the, the grave, Mary saw him, wanted to touch touch him. He said, No, 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 don't come near me until I go and do perform this first harvest, first fruit offering. I have to offer myself to my father to fulfill what a high priest, because now the office of high priest is now bestowed unto him. It's resting on his hands. So he, he should accomplish it. If it were, if he, if he were to be in the temple, nobody, no human being would come close to him. He will be in the Holy of Holies. So that's why he said, he said, Mary, don't touch me. I'm holy. If he touch me, I mean, you may get something else. I'm performing assignment, the rituals, the ceremony that will determine my security, your security, salvation, deliverance, which only the Father offers, hasn't been done. I will go and present my Father and myself to my Father. And in this first fruit, you heard where he was saying, bring your offering, bring your offering. So this is offering. The grain they, 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 they produce from the, the farm, now they have to get a sheaf. A sheaf is a portion of what they produce, and they call it wave offering. And they will give it to the high priest, who is in Holy of Holies. He will lift it to Yahweh in, you know, as a prayer that he will offer on behalf of all Israelites so that. Yahweh will keep them, secure them. Yahweh will receive that, bless them, and continue to keep them safe. It's all about keeping us safe. And that's why we have to do all this given offering. But Yahshua offered the offering, the eternal offering, salvation offering, spiritual offering, if you like, that deliver, the offering of deliverance, final deliverance, salvation, that we give us salvation when he returns into the kingdom now what he did was to go to heaven that same day he woke up he came he resurrected from the dead he ascended into heaven go and tell my brother or my brethren that i am going to my father to present myself my father and your father when i go and finish i will come back but you will meet me in galilee So this is where it was. If you read that, read, read it for me, please. John chapter, John chapter, I think it's in verse 17. So first harvest or first fruit is very, very vital as we celebrate this feast of unleavened bread. Very, very vital because that is what packaged us into deliverance, into salvation. You know, to to partake in the Passover and the living bread, I mean, Yahweh opens you up into your future, into your salvation, so that what the name of Yahshua will be fulfilled in your life, Savior, He will save you. John twenty. John, uh, John twenty. Read seventeen from seventeen. There, I think it's just one verse there. Yahshua said unto her, "Touch me not." 
Mm -hmm. I am not yet ascended unto my father. Touch me not. I have not ascended to my father yet. Go on. But go to my brethren mm -hmm. and say unto them, mm -hmm. I ascend unto my father mm -hmm. and your father mm -hmm. and to my uh, Yahweh mm -hmm. and your Elohim, your father. Mm -hmm. Go read, read, read. 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the master. She went, uh, she just ran and said, I have seen the master. Go on. And that he had spoken these things unto her. Mm -hmm. Then the same day at evening, mm -hmm. being the first day of the week, mm -hmm. when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, mm -hmm. came Yahshua mm -hmm. and stood in the, in the midst mm -hmm. and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Mm -hmm. And when he had all said, he shoot himself unto them, mm -hmm. his hands and his side. Then we are the disciples glad when they saw the master. Then said Yahshua to them again, Peace be unto you. Mm -hmm. As my father sent, had sent me, even so sent I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. All right, thank you. So we have seen how Yahshua went away from them temporarily, went to heaven. Literally, he went to heaven. That same day, he rose from the dead. He went to heaven to perform this ceremony, to present himself as a, a sheaf before the Father. It's called wave offering. So the Father accepted him and accepted us. Because he took on board every... And when he came, see, he presented something. Why did he breathe upon them? He said they received the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit giving? The fruit of life. The fruit, without that, you can't do anything. Forget about the kingdom. So that is exactly what... In fact, the new, when you talk about the... In this, that is the beginning of our salvation. That which he performed, even before the, 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 the brethren, the, the disciples, he came. He showed him his hands to them. I'm the one. And he breathed upon them. He, and he said, receive. That is what he got from the father. The, he has to, he himself has to agree with the father. And the father, blessing him, brought the blessings to the bre brethren and the pass, pass that on the spirit because the spirit belonged to him and the father so first harvest or first fruit is part of the living bread you must celebrate so verses 9 and 14 is important there let me read it then Yahweh said to Moses Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you enter the land I am giving you, and you harvest its first crops, first fruits, bring the priests a bundle of grain. This is the, the sheaf now. Bring it with, for wave offering. From the first cutting of your grain harvest. Do you know that Israelites entered the land of Canaan? The first the first day they got into the land of Canaan was on the day they were celebrating the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That was when they entered there. As we are about to mark the, uh, the Passover and the Unleavened Bread. That was when they entered the land of Canaan. And that tells you, Yahweh has, he knows how to work out everything for perfection of whatever he's doing. He walked them in advance and he caused them to happen that way. That was when they ate, as soon as they got there, they ate the, the first grain that they were being harvested. Then manna stopped falling from heaven for them. That was when the manna stopped. So they began to eat the grain. Who produced the grain? The Canaanites. So they will eat the food that they never worked for. Mm. Gentiles will work for you. When the time comes, when Yahshua returns, Gentiles will work for you. 
We work quite all right, but they will produce so much for us. They will bring gifts from everywhere. I, I, human eyes haven't seen, or even what you are hearing, we haven't even heard. What is just it's just little, little, little. What we are getting is just a you know, small, small, small idea of what will happen. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest will lift it up. Exactly what Yeshua did for us. The priest will lift it up before Yahweh, so it may be accepted on your behalf. This is instruction Yahweh was telling them. When you get in there, your first crop and all that, in the time and the period of unleavened bread, when you are presenting yourself, the first day, lift, give it to the priest, let priests pray on your behalf. On that same day, you must sacrifice a one-year-old male lamb with no defects as a burnt offering to Yahweh. Burnt offering is sin offering. So you have sin offering, you have burnt offering. It's all about, uh, you know, appeasing for their sin, sacrifice for their sin, both two offerings, sin offering and burnt offering. With it, you must present a grain of a grain offering consisting of four parts of choice flour, moistured with olive oil. It will be a special gift, a pleasing aroma to Yahweh. You must also offer one glass of wine as a liquid offering. Do not eat any bread or roasted grain or fresh kernels on that day until you bring this offering to your father. This is a permanent law for you and it must be observed from generation to generation wherever you live, wherever. Now we are not living in Canaan, wherever. We are living in the entire world, wherever you may find yourself. It is compulsory, generation to generation, forever and ever. Keep on doing it. Don't stop it. But you always say something. Don't eat of whatever you produce from the farm until you go and do harvest. In the eastern part of Nigeria where we came from, most of us, and uh, some part of Africa, some of us also may have that. In those days when we are kids, they, they, our fathers will say, ah, all this is, in fact, they don't eat yam, they don't eat some other things until they go and do harvest, what they call harvest. First fruit harvest. They go and present it into the church. So this is where they got it. You see, people that does that, they are Israelites. They are doing what the fathers of old we are doing. That's why I know that we are Israelites. There are so many things our, our, our fathers, you know, are still doing of the ancient of these scriptures. So this is the Old Testament, you know, instruction of how Passover and the living bread should be commemorated year in, year out without stopping or stoppage. Now let's look at the New Testament. What happened? What Yeshua? We are not going to read all about the whole thing, but going to pick some few things to you know, explain some important portion of the New Testament perspective. Now, in Matthew 26, Yahshua had sent his disciples um, in verse 17. He said, On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Yahshua and asked, Where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you? And as you go into the city, he told them, You will see a certain man. Tell, them, tell him, the teacher says, My time has come. And I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Yahshua told them and prepared the Passover meal there. They went, prepared it. What happened? They went back. And guess what? Verse 20. When it was evening, so they waited until it was done at sunset. Yahshua sat at the table with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, 
one of you will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one asked in tongue, Am I the one Yahweh? Yeshua. Because the Lord, the Yeshua is Yeshua. Correct me. He replied, One of you who has just eaten from the from this bowl will, will betray me. For the Son of Man must die, as the scriptures declared long time ago. But how terrible it will be for the one to whom to who is given to betray me. It would be far better for him that man uh, to be far better for that man if he had never been born. Judas, the, the one who who betrayed him, also asked, Rabbi, am I the one? Master, so what that means? And Yeshua told him, You have said it. So Judas was himself told clearly because what others were asking is it means it means. Judas, you know, lowered his voice towards Yeshua's ear and then whispered, Is it me? I believe others didn't hear. But somewhere along the line, those who were watching may understand because he was sitting close to Yeshua. So Yeshua said, It's you. You have said it yourself. And as they were eating, um, I think uh, John's uh, epistle, uh, I mean, sorry, John's uh, book said that at that time the, the, the spirit of Satan entered into Judas as soon as that. No, no, it was when he took, he didn't eat the meal. As soon as he, he was told this, the spirit, evil spirit entered into him to completely destroy him. As they were eating, Yeshua took some bread and blessed it. Then, now this is critical, 26 to 20, 29. Yeshua took bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to Yahweh, to, Yah, to, Yahshua, uh, to Yahweh for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between Yahweh and his people. It is poured out as sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Now, what did he call it? Covenant. It is the covenant Yahweh made between himself and his people. Yahweh made a covenant. And who is heading this covenant? In, 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 in whose head does this covenant rest? Yahshua. Yahshua is the Passover, the Paschal Lamb. Yahshua is the person upon which the covenant is resting. Now, it is poured out as sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day, until the day I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Have you seen it? Some read this father's kingdom or kingdom of heaven as if it is in heaven. No, 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 no. These disciples is meeting them here on earth and he will drink it with them here. Apparently, is during the marriage supper of the lamb. And beyond that, it will be a ceremony or feast or festival that will continue with him. So this thing will be celebrated. If you say this thing cannot be celebrated now, or the unliving bread should not be kept now. Did you hear this? That Yeshua said to his disciples, continue to do it. I will not do it, eat it again because it's no longer going to be here with us. But you that is here, continue to eat it until I return and I will eat it there with you in the new kingdom. In the very kingdom of the Father that he is going to inaugurate when he comes. So it's vital we pay attention, we listen to him, and follow strictly the instruction that pertains to the Passover and the unliving bread. And all other feasts feast that he gave to us or asked us to keep. But those feasts are all about 
our salvation. It is the master plan of Yahweh concerning our salvation. That is why he gave us all those feasts. And if we skip doing them, or do them anyhow, or do them, or add or subtract, now somebody will pay the price. The person who lives in disobedience will pay the price, certainly. So, just a, a quick recap. We have mentioned that the Passover meal is, in this particular time, is done after we have baptism in Yeshua because Yeshua is the Passover, the Passover lamb, the, 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 the Passover itself, it was a shadow, Passover from Egypt was a shadow of the mesh uh, Passover, which is what is happening at this time. Yeshua, you know, offered himself. He became the very Passover lamb. He became the renewer, the one that renewed the covenant. He became the covenant that the father was looking at from Abraham. That seed, through him, the covenant will be, you know, made to all Israelites or be handed to the entire Israel. So, we are into our first week, we are into our first month, we are into our first year. It begins this month. In fact, start it started from the new moon. Started from the new moon. Now, let me quickly show you something in Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. I think it's Leviticus 23. About all these festivals or feasts which Yahweh said we must be keeping. We must do everything in our power or strength. Some of us are lacking behind. When we call for new moon, it's absolutely important. New moon is biblical. When we are in Christendom, I never knew that new moon is part of what we should be keeping. It's true. New Testament, Old Testament. It is recommended. We are mandated to keep it. Now, Israelites have so many festivals or feasts. I'm going to, you know, list some of them now for you to understand what we are doing. Their annual circle of Israelites celebration, all these feasts, you know, annually. Yahweh has given us all those, you know, for purpose. To help us remember the acts of Yahweh in each stage of certain, you know, Yahweh's work in our lives, particularly in delivering us, in uh, bringing us into the land, in saving us. He wants to give us the land. He want, He has given us the seed. He wants to give us the land. So, before we get into that land, we will all be delivered from the power of sin, from the power of Gentiles, and all the captivities that have held man down we will be delivered and through the measure of you know walking keeping ourselves holy righteous through yeshua and by performing this feast we will be able to enter into that kingdom or enter into the land of israel when he returns now periodic festivals or feasts are like this number one is the the sabbath the Sabbath, and it is called the weekly Sabbath. Leviticus chapter 1 to 2. Sorry, Leviticus um, chapter 1 talks about that 2 to 17. Uh, Leviticus chapter 6, 8 to 13 specify the weekly Sabbath. Every seven days we celebrate it. A weekly day of rest from all our works. Yahweh command, commanded it and he asked us to continue to keep it. So it's a continuous something we must be doing. That is number one. Number two, we have new moon. Numbers 28, 11 to 15. New moon. We must keep it. First day of every month. New moon is first day of every month. The beginning, the first day of every month. 
So our first day was on the fourth on the 14th which we celebrated the new moon so from there you calculate 14 days you celebrate feast of passover and unleavened bread then all other feasts queue in from there after 50 days you celebrate pentecost from then on you know continue to to move and calculate other feasts so that is how it is new moon is important new moon is the beginning in fact Sabbath, weekly Sabbath and new moon. Lay hands on them, you'll be able to be calculating other feasts. All these are feasts. Sabbath year, there is what is called Sabbath year, Leviticus 25, 1 to 7. Sabbath year. We are not, <laughs> would I say we are not equipped to be keeping that? Sabbath year, it's a every seventh year feast, seven years. It rose. Seven years. You jubilee. keep it. It's not jubilee. Uh, a Sabbath rest for the land by not cultivating or harvesting. A Sabbath, it, it is a period you lay fallow the land. Because Israel, Israel is an agrarian nation or country. Agriculture is their business. It's not like this uh, bubbling and high up and high down kind of nation, gentle world we live. Israelites are agrarian people and Yahweh gave them their, you know, time frame, you know, using moon to be what they use to calculate time and season and so on. So in every seven years, they, they, they allow the land to rest. And that's why he was talking about the land to rest in Isaiah and um, Leviticus. I think Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 40 to 45. He said they were not allowing the land to rest as, uh, as, uh, as such. The, the land was not doing it, it, a Sabbath. Therefore, Israel has to leave the land. He has to drive them away. That was during the time of Judah. So that the land will have rest. So, we must obey Yahweh. Well, many of us, we are in government kind of, secular kind of work. We are not agrarian people uh, in nature. Because we are all, that's why it's like this particular feast is forgotten. But we should understand it and we will be observing it. But it's about the land. Mankind will leave the land fallow. For that particular year. Jubilee year. Leviticus 25, 8 to 17. Jubilee year. And um, it's a 50 year. It's a, it's a 50 year frame time or season. You have to allow 50 years. At this particular time. If somebody owe you anything. An Israelite owe you anything. You are about to forgo it. You, you, you don't ask him to pay back. So, it is counted from the day of atonement. You begin to celebrate it. From the day of atonement, you, you, you keep the celebration. It's, it's an additional Sabbath year. Land reverted to its ancestral owners. Debts are forgiven and the slaves are freed during this particular time. If you learn you know, a land or, you know, if somebody has in any way ancestral land that's, you, 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 maybe somebody uses to borrow money from you or whatever, at the end of the day, the person has, hasn't paid, you don't go continue farming there. You will leave it for the person. If there is any debt owed, that is, you know, also forgiven and slaves are freed. And if any slave said he's not going, man or woman, that slave will be taken and the ear will be opened. All of us that are listening. And um, most of our children, they want to follow or join the Gentile world. They open the ear of that slave and put a ring there. That is a mark of a slave. If your son or daughter is doing that, or if you are doing that, you are saying you are a perpetual slave. We are not 
not allowed to do that. Yahweh has freed us. But if you have a slave in your house, after this 50 years stretch, the person is there, you remove that earring, and the person becomes a free person. Freedom. Don't go and put earring in your ears because it's a, a jolly jolly way. It's, it's, a, it's a fashion. It's not a fashion. It's gentile. Israelites saw that in Egypt and they borrowed that and they were, they were living like that. So we told them the implication. They want to be a slave, put that. And the person will suffer as a slave. It's unfortunate. That's the way of Gentile anyway. It, it was for them, but for people of Yahweh. And tattoo. Tattoo also is a mark. Satanic mark they give themselves. Don't go after tattoo. Tell your children, tell yourself, don't go after tattoo. And that's why even in, within this time, people are talking about uh, this uh, global government, they're going to tattoo people as a chip or whatever. However, they want to do it. And it says, don't try that. Yeah, we say, don't try that. Anything that has to do with tattoo, don't try it. So just for us to know. Passover. Which we are celebrating, Leviticus 25, verse 5, verse 5, which you know we've been reading all this while. Um, on living bread, it's another feast. First harvest is part of on living bread. Um, harvest that is called harvest or um, weekly, or uh, sorry, um, Pentecost, Shavuot is also the feast. After now, we can calculate 40 days plus 1, which is 50 days. We celebrate harvest or Pentecost. And uh, we have trumpets that, that we follow. We have Day of Atonement. And um, after Day of Atonement, we have um, shelter, Feast of Shelter, which also is attached the last day. The last day that together, like we have Passover and unleavened bread, they are together. So, all these are feasts that we must keep. We must keep them. Yahweh asks us to keep them. Now, there are ones that we don't do, the Purim. Well, it's a feast or celebration to commemorate um, Yahweh's rescue of the Jews. So, it's not entire Israel, it's just the Jews. Israelites have left, the tenth have left by the time this one was happening. And um, dedication, you know, that's what they call, um, if you look at John chapter 10, 22, uh, Hanukkah. Hanukkah is another feast, but we don't fully celebrate that. Yeshua also was there when they were celebrating it in temple. But all that seven plus the, the, the seventh year feast, the 50th year feast, the new moon, and the Sabbath, plus all the seven, we are asked to celebrate. And um, if we observe them, Yahweh will be pleased with us. Now, I want to ask us a question, and I will be closing from here. I want to ask us, it's a quiz. Hello, just um, open your, 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 your whatever, your device. Unmute your device and um, let's answer the. It's based on what I've been, you know, the message that we've been hearing here from Yahweh. The, the, so it's easy for you. It's, it's easy. But I'm, I made it so easy for you um, that um, at the end of the day, uh, it's optional. There are options. Options to. I, I give answers. Optional answers. So it's not going to be difficult for you to, you know, onboard it. Number one question is, Passover of Old Testament. Passover of Old Testament, which is looking at what happened in Egypt. The Passover in Egypt and the Canaan, how they were celebrating that Old Testament Passover. What is the main meal or the actual meal eaten? What was the main meal or the actual meal i'm going to give you options select number one option a option a 
unleavened bread, B, unleavened bread and wine, C, unleavened bread plus wine and bitter herbs, D, the animal, E, all of the above. Who said all of the above? I Mention your name so that we know who is answering. We are alive now. We are. I mean, we we are interacting. Yes, Eddie. Okay. Who else again? Who else again? I did. Okay, that is Joyce, is it? Yeah. All right. Who else again? Yes, ma'am. Is it just of the old time or both the old and the new? The, the question suggests is the old. Okay. So, is there pa pa Passover, Passover is Passover. Oh, but I made it in a bit clearer for us so that we know where the question is taken from. The answer is on C part of B. Let me let me let me read it again. Let me read it again. Let me read the question again. In Passover of Old Testament, what is the main meal or the actual meal to be eaten? Unleavened bread, eh? B unleavened bread plus wine. C unleavened bread and wine plus bitter herbs. D the animal. E, all of the above. So Joyce and Eddie said all of the above. E. It's animal. It's animal. Okay. Uh, my brother Ken said it's animal, and uh, my sister said it is animal. Mommy, which one do you choose? See? The one that has unleavened bread and wine and bitter herbs. Mm -hmm. well. Alright. Okay. Do you know you don't have anywhere you fall? <laughs> Who else is there? Who has not answered? Is B. A living bread. I want to find out whether we understand what you are doing. There this is, is the heart of what you are doing. They were B is a, a living bread mm. and wine. Bitter herbs was there. Unfortunately, they didn't drink wine that day. So that should not be the answer. Wine is not there. So anybody that picked C is wrong because wine is in C. It's they didn't wine. drink they didn't drink wine there. Mm -hmm. Did they? They ate on living bread. They, there was bitter herb that was eaten with the animal. So what were they eating that night? It was the animal. The issue is not on the living bread or if wine was there, or wine, or bitter herb. No, it was the animal. So, Brother Ken and uh, my sister, you are right. Thank you so much. Clap for them. <laughs> now, the second query, the second question and the final for, for today anyway. In Passover of New Testament, I have to come down to where we are today. That's why I'm mentioning you and old. So, you will understand exactly where we are going. In Passover of New Testament, what are we required to eat and why? I will give you options. Pay attention. In Passover of New Testament, what are we required to eat and why? A. Leavened bread plus wine and the salvation. B. Unleavened bread only. C. Unleavened bread plus leavened bread and wine and salvation. D. Unleavened bread plus wine and salvation. E. All of the above. D. Living bread, what's, wine. what's A again? A, um, A is living bread and wine 
through our salvation. Not N. B, let me A. repeat it. A is leaven bread and wine plus salvation. B, unleavened bread. C, unleavened bread plus leavened bread and wine plus salvation. D, unleavened bread plus wine and salvation. E, all of the above. All right, all right. Wine and salvation. Okay, why is it not C? But leaven bread plus leaven bread and wine and salvation. That one has plenty of options. I want no, you options. can't get leaven here together. No, it's, it's ruled out. All right, leaven spoiled it. Mm. Right, you're right. That is great. All of you got it right. Um, that is good performance. So we understand what we are doing. We know what we are doing. And uh, another serious instruction there is that we must be clean. We must be clean. We must avoid sin. So this evening we talk about that. That is on the heart check up before Passover. We are going to look at heart check up. What? How we going to look at our hearts? What are what we must do? And what is it all about? It has to do with the body and blood. It has to do with spiritual mind. It has to do with uh, purging, you know, of all the leaven. So this evening we look at that. May Yahweh bless you. May Yahweh strengthen you. May Yahweh continue to encourage you. May He continue to help you to eat the flesh of Yahshua and drink His blood, which is. What you are going to do this evening, taking the bread and drinking from the uh, fruit of the vine. So we are trusting your way that as we celebrate this Passover and mark the unleavened bread, whatever is the trouble against us will trouble itself. They will not trouble us again because it's all about our troublers. Then we will remove all the troubles and give us freedom, give us security, deliver us. It's all about deliverance. And ultimately, through that, we will get salvation by Yeshua when he returns. May Yeshua bless you and continue to strengthen you in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Any query, any observation, any comments? All right, I want us to continue to read, prepare ourselves. You know, when Yahshua said you eat the word, eat it, it's our food. I believe that there are things that are in the scriptures we do not know. We're supposed to know. We should ask questions. Part of what we'll, we'll be doing during this time of the feast is the scripture we eat it digest it and we ask ourselves questions as you know the questions we are asked now and we respond we try to find out so that we can we clear all the hurdles all the loopholes all the areas that we do not understand we get to, to know them um the the truth of yahweh has to be at our fingertip as yahshua returns because he's preparing us for service. Apostle Paul says that Israelites we are called. They were the people that we are giving Yahweh service. So he's preparing us for service. Most of us don't know what we are. Yes. We are we are exceptional amongst human race. We are exceptional. We are we are not just ordinary. Yahweh has prepared us. That's why he's been. Is it since? Abraham was called. He began to prepare human beings for his assignment. Yet, the more he called, the more majority do whatever they like. So let us be, even in the remnants that will know, follow him, believe him, and be saved at the end of the day. May Yahweh bless you. It's going to be a wonderful, you know, festival 
year for us. And uh, you know, when there is crisis and there is Passover, there is unleavened bread, you better draw close to Yahweh because something is about to happen. May Yahweh bless you, may He keep you, and may He continue to strengthen and cover you, even from the eyes of the enemy. They will not see us in Yahshua's name. Hallelujah. Keeping the Sabbath.